This is a video some of you may have been waiting for. Today is release day, the day that I say I'm done prototyping, I have tested it, I have checked it, and it's ready for you. The X-Tool grid board by Samcraft is coming up next. Hey everybody, my name is Sam. Welcome back to Samcraft and welcome to launch day. Launch of the Xtool D1 grid board file by Sam. This guy, me. So in today's video, I'm going to bring you along step by step as I build and show you everything you're going to go through if you buy this file to make your own grid board. Now, if you're not a customer, you're not looking to buy one, this video may still be helpful for you. I go through some tips and tricks on designing, how I laid it out to where I can still use my honeycomb bed, my rotary, my riser feet, and I don't affect the laser itself, yet keep 100% precision and accuracy with the template for engraving as things move. If you want to get this file, it is linked down below on my website. I also have it listed on Etsy and a few other places, but my website is always the cheapest place to get it. There's no seller fees, there's no third party, and that's the best deal. Without further ado though, let's jump into this project and get this thing made. So let's talk about the materials you need to do this project. You need the actual spool board material itself. In this case, I'm using half inch plywood. I got some pretty good quality plywood from the local hardware store. I wanted something with a lot of layers so it is very stable because if you have your board and it warps at all, it is not gonna be very useful for engraving, focusing, cutting, and doing anything of the sort. You've got to have your spool board level. That's really, really important. In addition to that, you're gonna need a scrap piece of three millimeter or eighth inch plywood any kind of laser wood you probably will have around your workshop already and this is for cutting out the feet that reference the laser itself to your spool board you're gonna see that there's two different design feet you can choose which one you want or if you're like me decide to cut them both out and then once you see it in real life you can pick which one's your favorite then all right guys first things first let's jump into Lightburn here and let's open the first file of this project which is gonna be the one you use to cut out feet for your grid board so I'll go ahead and go to open, and this one is called X-Tool Gridboard Feet Rings. Very creative name by me. All right, first thing you'll notice when you open this, you're going to have eight different feet rings of two different designs. You can pick and choose which one you want to cut. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, set it to my cut layer of two, and cut them out. I've also put text down here below sharing with you what my particular X-Tool D1 20 watt laser will cut Baltic Birch plywood at for three millimeter Baltic Birch, which is nine millimeters a second, 80% power and two passes. Of course, with the air assist on and on a honeycomb bed. If you don't have air assist or you don't have a honeycomb bed, or if you have a 10 watt, you're gonna need to tweak these settings and find out whatever works best for you. But I figure why not give you guys my cut settings, give you a place to start with, and hopefully it works out great and you don't have to waste too much material dialing in your own personal settings. From here, if you know you don't want one design or the other, you could very easily just click highlight, you could delete it, or down here at the bottom, you can click one of your toolpath colors, the T1 or T2, and that just makes it where it doesn't output it to the laser, but saves the file in your design. As always, before you run a job, you wanna click the preview button up top. It'll show you what's about to happen. It's always a good practice to get into. So from here, I can see, okay, I'm only gonna be cutting out the gear feet, but if I wanna do all of them, just select all, go back down to the red cut layer two, and then if I preview again, it shows me, okay, now we're gonna cut out all eight, which is what I'm gonna do next. I went ahead and cut out the circles and the gear design since I'm making this video for you guys, but obviously you'll just choose the one you like or cut out both of them and see which ones you really like in real life. I don't know that there's a great difference between the two, but the gear design looks cool. It kind of matches my Samcraft logo, but it also gives more surface area for the glue to adhere to the spool board. 
I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Obviously, there's enough surface with this as well. In reality, this is just holding your laser right on top of your board at the same spot every time. If you go to remove it, add your extension feet or whatever. And so I really don't think there's a big difference between the two. Just choose what you like. The next thing to do is disassemble the X tool. Now that we have our feet cut, we can take off the air assist nozzle, take off the enclosure, unhook the wires, get everything off and cleaned off, and then set down our new board, our blank spool board. Really quickly, here is a look at my prototype. This is the version one board. You're gonna notice some differences between this and what I'm presenting to you guys today. But that's why I always will design something I'll prototype it, I'll tweak it, I'll adjust it, I'll redesign it, and then finally offer it for you guys. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes in to make sure that I not only create a grid file that's good, but also an assembly and a, I don't know, a process of building it that makes sense and is the easiest as well. This is also a good example of why I tell you to get at least a half inch thick spool board. This is five millimeter thick, multi-layer plywood, supposed to be good stuff, but I still had problems with it bowing. Even after putting weight, carpet tape, and everything on it, it still wanted to move on me over time. This is the strips of carpet tape on the back, and you can tell it was strong stuff because I went to pull it up, it actually ripped the layers apart. My new panel is freshly cut outside on the circular saw, and it's about 24 and a half by 24 and a half. You don't have to be specific, so I really wasn't. One side was already done, I had 24 and a half, so I made the other match. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down on the workbench. We'll put the feet in place roughly, and then set the X tool laser on top. At this point, it's just a matter of moving the laser around and squaring it up however you want while keeping the feet inside the little feet rings. You can be as picky as you want with this, but remember, it really doesn't matter at all if the board on the bottom is squared with the laser. None of it matters. You just want the feet on top of the board and everything just like that. It's not that picky. An easy way to make sure your feet are correct is to kind of spin them. If they spin, you know your laser is not sitting on top of it. And if you can kind of pick them up, that's a perfect way to know they are where they need to be. Now it's time to glue those feet rings down. You could either use some CA glue and spray activator, or in my case, you could use something such as a regular wood glue or a quick and thick quit set wood glue. I'm just going to pick the rings up, apply the glue around, probably on the spool board, and then sit them back down. I'll repeat that for all four feet, and then we can move on to the next step. At this point, we need to wait and let that glue set up and dry, but this is the perfect time to jump over into Lightburn, open the grid board file, and let me talk to you guys about a couple of options you're gonna see. When you first open this, it's gonna look very confusing. So let me try and explain the method behind Sam's design madness here. All right guys, I just opened up the file, the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt grid template by Samcraft. Um, again, this is not specific just to the 20 watt, although some of the parameters in here are set because of the size of the laser head of the 20 watt versus the 10 or the 40. So if you have a different module head, go from there. And it's really gonna be an issue only if you have the 40 watt, because it's a larger machine. The 20 watt and 10 watt, the 10 watt will fit fine. You may have um, more space in here to use than I do because the 10 watt diode head is smaller. All right, first thing to do here is read through the cuts and layers. I have labeled them as logically as I can. We have uh, a notes layer, a border test, grid text, grid marks, the four inch circles and squares as a nine pack, as well as the crosshairs for the nine pack. Then we have the round text, and the crosses, the circles, and everything for the 12-pack. 
Over there to the right, I've tried to label them logically and you can enable and disable and know what you're doing more easily. What you're basically looking at is a two-in-one, but also a multi-purpose, kind of um, somewhat infinite option way for you to make your own grid board from this one file. As it looks right now, I wouldn't recommend you running this job. It would be pretty insane and might be difficult to follow and use in real life. First thing I want to cover though are the notes that I put right here to the side to remove or disable any layers you do not wish to engrave in your final spool board. This allows you to customize the final design to suit your own needs. There is a layer C09, which is the border test. This is the maximum real life work area of the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt from my own test. Anything outside this square that I've designed on the board would trip my limit switches. This is the first thing I want you guys to do. So let's do that right now. Let's disable all other layers except for the border test. So over here to the right, I'm going to click on the little button to turn off output for every single layer except for that first one, or well, the border test one. By just clicking the output switch off, you can see that you are still able to see your designs there. If you want to just remove them totally and not see them, you can also click off the show button. I wouldn't recommend deleting anything just yet though. I mean, if you want to, you go for it. But at this point, I really use the output and show switches a lot in Lightburn. So at this point, I should just have my border test. Let's go ahead and click on preview, which is a great thing to get in the habit of doing anytime you use Lightburn. And yes, I see a giant square. Great, exactly what I wanted. One quick note, the border test, I've set the speed and power to a level that it should not engrave on your spool board. It should just basically do like an outline, like a framing outline. The speed is 200 millimeters per second and the power is 1%. You could frame this up, but I've found that sometimes if I framed something and then went to run the job, sometimes I would get kind of different results. So I tend to do this. I tend to set my power super low and actually run the file, tell it to engrave and actually do the work. This way I know from here forward, if it passes and doesn't set off any alarms, everything else on this file will fit. Everything else is within this border test. So let's go ahead and run that first. The number one thing to note about this grid template file, this full board file, and this will apply forever. Once you use this, you will never deviate from this. Your starting point needs to always be absolute coordinates. Do not have current position. Do not have user origin. You want absolute coordinates. What that means is its point of origin is the home point of the machine. So whenever you start this thing up, yeah, Lightburn usually will auto home the machine. If you run a file and you want to run the next one, always get in the habit of clicking that home button. Put it at the home position. That way what you lay out here in Lightburn really makes sense in real life. Nice, no problems there. Hopefully you have the exact same outcome if you're doing this alongside with me. At this point, I know my border test is good. I don't need to worry about anything. So I'm going to turn output off and I'm going to turn the show button off. I don't want to see it anymore. I'm done with it. Now let's talk about all the different options in here. So there are basically two main file designs that I've used in the past and kind of designed and I decided to merge them into this one file to give you a ton of options. The first one is going to be a grid with text. So let's go ahead and enable those layers. You see layer three says grid text. We'll set it to output and show. Layer, what is that, zero, zero, the one right below it says grid marks. Let's go ahead and enable that one. Looks good. So now let's go ahead and preview this. We can easily see what it looks like. Here we see that it is a basic grid. It is measured from the home point. So you see the first coordinate is actually Y1, X2, or X2, Y1, because it's the first place that I could place without hitting outside of that border that we did. The increments are in one inch, so this is an imperial grid board. I'm working on designing a metric one though, so if that's something you're interested in, one, let me know down below that you want a metric version, and two, sit tight. I am designing it for you guys. Otherwise, what you see is what you get. It's basically 16 inches wide, 15 inches tall, and it's a grid board with crosshairs at inch increments everywhere. This is really handy if I want to just put an object on my machine, set it wherever I want, if I line it up with the grids, I can design and lay my layout how I want, and it works great for coordinating light burn with real life. So that's the basic grid board. 
what I decided and what I've actually prototyped, which you guys saw me take off earlier, is the grid board plus some coaster circles and squares. So the four inch circles, that was also on there, as were the squares. So if we preview that, we can now see we've got the same grid board and now there is a nine or there are nine sets of circles and squares overlaid. That's the maximum that would fit in this grid board with the squares. And I decided to evenly disperse them in case you've got a little bit of variances in that four inch. You know, it's a little bit more or less. You can line them up pretty good this way. So this is another option. The, uh, what is this, crosshair nine pack? This is something I put in there in case you want the same kind of layout, but you want crosshairs for your center point. Here you go, you got that option there as well. This is the center point of the nine circles and squares, by the way. So that's the, the first kind of group of grid. What I'm gonna do next is turn off these nine packs and I'm going to enable the 12 packs because for me, I do mostly round objects. I don't do squares, I don't do square coasters, I do circles. And if I only do circles, I can increase the number from nine to 12. So what I'm going to do is Okay, so here's another option. You're going to see this layer. It says round text. This is if you only wanted the round layer or the round file and you don't want the grid board. So let me do this. Let me turn off the grid marks and turn off the grid text. We'll preview this. And here is kind of what you're seeing. It kind of looks like a, I don't know, a target or something. You've got 12 circles and you've got diameters at four, three, two, and one inch, as well as the crosshairs. The round text is what you see up there at the top left where it says the D1 Pro round template. And so that's what that is. This is pretty cool, especially if you do say drink coasters, car coasters, maybe pet tags that are circular or other things that are different sizes that are circular. This would be a good template for you to use. It allows you to not get locked in just with a four inch diameter. It allows you to have the multiple concentric rings and center your object pretty well. So we'll say okay to that. Uh, for me personally, I'm gonna now make a hybrid. I know I don't really need the round text, so I'm gonna turn that off. I like the 12 pack circles, but I don't do smaller objects. So I'm gonna turn off the three inch, the two inch, and the one inch, as well as the crosshairs. It's not really something that I personally use. I do, however, wanna turn back on the grid board text and the grid marks, because I do use those for utensils and other odd things. Now, if I preview, there we go. I can see this is now my custom grid board that I want to do. I have the grid board, I have my circles, I can do 12 packs of coasters at a time and have the grid. This is personally what I like. So this is personally what I'm going to engrave. I'll click okay here. And now we'll talk really quickly about speed and power settings. By default, everything that's going to engrave is set at 200 millimeters per second at 80% power. Anything that is fill, so the text and the uh, Samcraft logo is set to the same setting, but overscanning is enabled. In case you don't know it, Xtool wants overscanning. Enable overscanning with Xtool whenever you fill. It gives you better quality results for sure. At this point, I'm ready to go ahead and run it because I've tested the speed of 200 millimeters a second, 80% power on my material, and it gives me pretty good results. However, if you don't know for sure this works for you, don't risk that spool board you just put down. Grab a piece of scrap wood. If, whether it be the exact same or not, grab something, run it, test it, and see if it's close. At that point, give it a shot. Just don't ruin your spool board at first in case it's too much. At the same time, if it's not enough power and you do accidentally run it and you're like, oh gosh, I can barely see that, you should be able to run it again and it'll just get a little bit darker. All right, so that is the light burned file overview. The big jumbled mumbled mess of what in the world hopefully is a little bit clearer now. I have my own custom grid board here. I'm chewing my preview, always want a preview. It looks good. I have my circles, I got my grids, and that's what I'm happy with. So the next thing to do is actually run the file on my spool board. Before I run the file, I do want to show you guys the point of the feet. So I can pick this machine up and the feet are glued in place. They're not going to move. This allows me to add the riser feet to the X tool if I want to use my rotary and not have to do anything different with the grid board. It's simple to take it out, put my feet in or whatever, and lock it right back in place. It is locked in there. It's not going to go anywhere. That is the key of this whole thing working, are the little feet that we cut out 
referencing them to the laser and gluing them in place. Now I'm going to stick my enclosure back on here because I'm getting ready to engrave my grid board and that's going to produce a lot of smoke and fumes. I'd rather get it out of the shop than have it in here. All right guys, enclosure is back in place, everything's hooked up, so now it's time for me to run my own custom grid board design. Well, there is a hefty dose of reality for you guys. Do you notice the circles messed up? The first time I ran them, I was running at 200 millimeters a second, 80% power, like everything else on the file. And I noticed on some of the circles, it would come around and like clunk. Come around, not clunk. Come around, clunk. I think my belts are a little bit loose. I need to check it out. I was losing steps. So as you see there, I ran the circles over and over and over. Because once I saw that they messed up the first time, I'm like, ah, what do you do? You just rehome, slow it down, and run it again. And then again, 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 to make the right lines bold. So in my instance, yep, didn't turn out perfect, but that is real life. You're gonna run into that. Trust me, you will run into that. So yeah, you, you could also, you know, take the board away and flip it over and redo everything, or just make them bolder and learn that you need to check your belts, make sure they're tensioned properly, and on the circles, slow down. So what you're going to see with the file, you're going to see that I made the circles 100 millimeters per second, 60% power. That did fine for me, even with my belts being loose, I hadn't tightened them yet, so it should be good for you as well. Perhaps it's worthwhile to make the circles and frame it, just kind of at that speed, see how it goes, maybe dial the speed down, I don't know. You guys are creative, we're sure to come up with good results, or honestly your belts are probably tight and you're just not going to have that problem. But either way, I wanted to at least show you, and yes, it'll always be there forever and ever. A reminder, machine maintenance really does matter. All right, grid board is done. Everything is fantastic, wonderful. And the next thing that you're gonna be wondering is, okay, great, we have this file. How do I use it now? What's the best way to take this pretty complex, busy file and turn it into something that I can actually design on? How do you recommend me doing that? Well, great question. Let's go ahead and answer that now. So here in the program, I've got the file exactly the way I just made it. What I would recommend doing is going up to File, Save As, and name it something that you want. You know, how about My X Tool Template? Maybe something like that. Let's go ahead and save it as a new file. That way, what we can do next is start to delete everything that we did not engrave into our waste board. We'll go through here, Delete Key, Get rid of that. Let's go ahead and click to unshow, or rather hide, the stuff we did and show the stuff we didn't. All right, so with that all showing, I'm just gonna click, highlight everything, press the delete key. We now have our blank slate, looking kind of scary. what do we do? That's why we chose to save the file before we start. And now let's click on the show for the different layers we have. At this point, what I have on screen is exactly what I have in my laser as my template. Next thing to do is to go ahead and highlight all of this and let's convert it to a toolpath. So down at the bottom, you have your layers. You got your numbers, one through 29. To the right of those, you'll see your T1, T2. Those are toolpaths. So let's go ahead and make it T2. Turns everything blue. Let's take it one step further. Let's go ahead and delete the Samcraft icon. Let's delete the X tool text 
you know if you wanted to you could delete your uh, coordinate text and numbers but I'm gonna leave that there because it'll be handy for me when I program at this point the thing to do also over here is what you already see make sure for your toolpath the frame option is turned off that way if you design something small and you want to frame it so you're using scrap wood you want to put it where it needs to go you don't have to like frame the whole thing because that's kind of useless as long as framing is turned off it will frame the layer that you've got not the toolpath at this point let's go ahead and save it again my X tool template is now saved. So what we can do, we can then start designing. Say we want to, uh, I don't know, so let's see if I got anything in my art library. Sure, let's drop in this little beehive icon. Here we go, we can zoom in on it. And if I want to center this on a coaster, say this one coaster it's plopped on, if I hold down the control key, click on the circle, I have them both highlighted, and then I'll click on the bullseye up top, and boom, centered on the coaster. And this is perfect because now I know if I wanna run this one item, I just take my coaster blank, sit it right there on that circle and run. It's good to go. We can verify this like we always should do by going up to preview. The only thing it's going to be engraving is that icon or that image and that's great. So there you go. That's how you use your templates, or at least that's how I use my templates with light burn and the lasers. I leave it as a tool path, that way I can see it to do layouts, but otherwise don't output it and I just have it visible on screen. As you guys saw, the grid board and everything that I've done does not affect or hinder my ability to use the honeycomb bed. When I was designing and working on this, it was very important that I did not create something that made me not able to use my rotary, the honeycomb bed, or any other accessories. This is a very easy thing. I, if I wanted to, I could pick the laser up, sit it somewhere else, I could remove the board, or honestly what I probably would do is just add the riser feet, keep it back on that board, and use it however I need to from there. If you guys are interested in getting this file, again, it is linked down below over my website. It's also for sale on my Etsy store and I believe the Facebook shop, but the cheapest option is always going to be on my website. I don't have any extra seller fees that I have to do, so things are always the cheapest down there. If you guys got any questions or comments, let me know. If you get this and you make it, please tag me. I'm on social media. I would love to see how it looks for your setup. I would love to see if uh, you did it better than me, which of course you will. If you won't have the double vision circles, I'm sure. Uh, I made that example and made that mistake so you guys could have something better. Otherwise, appreciate you guys watching and hanging out as always. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.